الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الناس يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقول ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبرت منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الناس يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أفتك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحديث حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار ثم أما بعد رب شرح لي سري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي Again, wa alaykum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everybody all around the world who is listening in to Ilm Summit Revisited. Uh, this is part two of uh, the summary of Sheikh Yasser Bilgas' class on modern fiqh issues for the medical, in the medical industry. And for those that weren't here yesterday, just to let you know, this is um, Ilm Summit Revisited, an effort by the students of, of Ilm Summit 2012. And inshallah, we will be revisiting classes that were taught by Sheikh Yasser Khadi, Sheikh Yasser Birjas, Sheikh Walid Basuni, and Sheikh Sa'ad Tasleem. My name is Uzair Khan, and today I will be taught, be teaching the second part of my class, which I started yesterday, or my session that I started yesterday on medical issues. Uh, and inshallah, today I will be speaking for about an hour uh, to finish off the topic that I started yesterday. Uh, and inshallah, after an hour, Sister Maimuna will be doing her session uh, after that. So inshallah, we'll go for an hour uh, and then we'll take inshallah a five minute break before the next uh, topic will be taught. So also just to give you guys another disclaimer for those that um, were here last yesterday or who listened in yesterday, just to let you know, again, I am a student of Sheikh Hasir Bijaz from Ilm Summit and I am teaching you what was taught to us as he was, as he taught it to us. So I am not going to I'm going to try to relay the best to my ability what he was what he taught, and the opinions that were taught in the class were of his opinions and not and what I was not necessarily my opinions. Also, just a reminder for those that uh, to, to those listening that I am not a faqih, I am not a, a sheikh, I am just a student, just like you all. Uh, I am I'm not qualified to answer um, the questions that are that require a fatwa. I'm not someone who can give a fatwa, so please, please keep that in mind when you ask me questions. I will try my best to uh, answer based upon what was in the class, but if something is there something I do not know or do not understand, I will basically give, maybe I'll try to give you some background, but I won't be able to give you a fatwa or give you any um, ruling. So it's better for you, and if, to have, if you have any specific questions or specific scenarios that, requ- that um, apply to you, the best is to the best thing to do is to um, go to your local imam, local sheikh, who has more knowledge, way more knowledge than I I do, and ask them the specific question. Inshallah, Taala. So let's move on to um, what we'll be discussing today. Inshallah, today I'll be discussing um, two topics. The first one is on gender selection, and the second one is on eugenics. So uh, gender selection uh, is the concept of being able to figure out whether you can uh, figure whether you can have a baby and uh, and prefer a certain gender when you have that baby, and what are the rulings with regards to that. And then eugenics is a topic on um, genetically figuring out or trying to trying to. Um, uh, find the right traits and desi- have the right desires for certain traits in the progeny 
by uh, doing medical um, tests and, and genetic engineering, etc., to have some sort of certain traits that are um, that show up in the next uh, generation. So, as we said yesterday, for those that don't, weren't here, quick just to summarize. When you deal with fiqh um, al-nawazil, the fiqh of unprecedented events, newly uh, developed issues, we always have to do two things. The first thing we do is we do a tas- uh, taswir. We, take, we, pretend, we present a picture uh, of uh, the issue. We try to um, come up with as much information as possible about the issue, we try to paint a picture of the, uh, the issue in our head, um, do as much research as possible. And then, inshallah, once we have a good picture of the issue, then we do taqif. And taqif is when you draw analogy of the issue to something in the text, uh, whether it be the Quran, the Sunnah, whether it be ijma, whether it be um, from uh, statements of some scholars of the past, or maybe it's similar to another uh, another uh, fatwa, etc., etc., etc. So for, for those that uh, weren't here yesterday, that is basically a summary of how I will be going about talking about these two topics. So, gender selection. That's pretty much that's weird. So, what happens is people, couples get married. They have a preference for, they have a preference for uh, a certain gender, um, and some some want girls, some want boys, and some people have a bias uh, for one or the other. And sometimes it's cultural. Sometimes it's uh, just for a desire. And we need to figure out, first of all, is this even possible? Um, there are some ways that it's possible, some potential uh, uh, strategies that people can do. Um, but we need to also, first, before we even get there, look at why would someone even want to uh, select the gender of the, of the child. Sorry, give me one second. Um, so the first benefit or the first uh, thing that uh, 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 one of the reasons why someone wants a child is a, such a, a social benefit um, that some people pay, possibly don't want the money um, to go to other families uh, when a child is uh, a daughter is born. So say if a daughter is born and they they realize that in the future that daughter will will have to um, will will get married and then. All that money that uh, was invested in that child was waste. Be- well, not waste, but like it's gone because the child uh, that that female is gone to some other family. So as a result, uh, they some people want um, uh, w- um, daughters. Another benefit uh, is a psychological benefit. So some people just for some reason have this psychological concept that they want a certain gender uh, and. Uh, it could be whether it could be brainwashing, whether it could be you name it, like something that causes someone to really desire uh, a gender, and if they don't get it, there will be psychological problems. And this is a reality. It does happen. Uh, it may seem like kind of weird, but it does happen. Uh, another benefit is a medical benefit, that one gender may, may, may carry a hereditary disease, uh, something that passes on through generation, um, and as a result, they don't want it to extend to a certain offspring. Um, so, as we know, if, uh, if for those who have experience or have some understanding of genetics, um, certain certain um, sexes or the gender of, a, of the child can have uh, uh, certain uh, diseases or certain hereditary diseases that pass on to specific genders. So that may be a reason why someone maybe choose to uh, to basically go to uh, to the length of trying to figure out whether they can or trying to prefer a certain gender over the other. So, uh, and the thing is, with in uh, in terms of gender selection, uh, there are many procedures, many ways of doing so. Um, there is, uh, and I'll go through all the ways. Uh, but let's let's start now that we know a general idea of the issue. Let's do a takif of the issue. So. We know that one of the biggest disadvantages of doing this by selecting a certain gender. Sorry, give me one second. Okay, so one of the one of the um, and let me just get back to what I was doing. So one of the 
One of the disadvantages of the procedure of doing this is that because some people want to engender, there's a create a social imbalance of one gender. Um, and as a result, uh, it could throw off um, the amount of people that are a certain gender. Uh, and as a result, for example, say if there's less men or less women, there is not enough people to marry for those that, that one gender. So that's one of the biggest disadvantages. Um, from a religious perspective, you're also, by doing this, you're trying, you're basically playing with the qadr of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and you're challenging the wisdom of Allah. In Surah Shu'ara, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to Allah belongs the heavens and the earth, and He creates what He wishes. He gives whomever He wishes females, and He gives whomever He wishes, fe- uh, sorry, that should be, He, <laughs> he gives whom he wishes males, and He gives whomever He wishes females, not only females. He makes some people barren. He mixes between boys and girls. He is the most knowledgeable Al-Qadir. So anyone who is doing this or who is uh, basically trying to select a certain gender, uh, there is an issue that is raised that that person is interfering with Allah's law and contradicting the, mas- the Mashiach of Allah. The Mashiach of Allah, which basically is uh, the will of Allah, um, and as a result, uh, and as a result, they are uh, they are potentially it could potentially be not allowed. Also, we look, look at, we have to look at some other issues that are similar to this issue. And another issue that's similar to the issue of gender selection is uh, there's an uh, analogy made to al azl or qiyas made to al azl. Now, al azl is the concept of um, family planning. Uh, and when basically the when a when a couple is having sexual inter uh, when a husband and wife is having sexual relations before the before um the 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 male is about to ejaculate uh the the, the male is uh the, the male withdraws and as a result there is no potential of um of having a a, a child and the the, the proof for, for the the allowance of this. Um, in general, the, the concept of Azul is when um, in, the, in the time of Sahaba and in the time of Sahaba and the time of Sahaba there were Sahaba that were practicing al Azul as a form of planning planning. Uh, and a man came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have only one female slave but I am afraid that she may get pregnant. Can I practice Azul on her? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yes, you can do it because if Allah decree it to happen, then it will happen. So, this shows us, this example, this hadith shows us that the, the concept of preferring a certain, uh, a certain uh, gender is allowed. Just be, and just, for the, just by this example of the fact that Rasulullah allowed such a thing to happen. Um, whether it be whether it be uh, basically the concept of withdrawal and uh, avoiding uh, a certain child. Also, the the Mashia of Allah um, uh, to having boys is also the Mashia to Allah of having girls. So if you wanted to have a boy, you got a boy, but it's not get, but it doesn't get you out of the Mashia of Allah. Basically, the will of Allah will happen regardless. It's impossible for you to get out of the will of Allah, no matter what you do. Even if you try your best. Uh, you try the best you possibly can to to somehow get a certain gender. Only Allah knows what will happen. He is, has his own will of certain uh, gender or certain progeny to be born, and you can't control it. And that's some, that's a part of our aqidah. We have this reliance or trust that Allah will it has his own will. Also, the only way to um, the only other way to abort. So the only other way besides uh, besides doing this, besides like figuring out beforehand, is to abort. So some people will say, or some of the some some uh, people try to even abort children if they have a certain gender. Um, so they they basically try they basically try to uh, have certain uh, certain uh, babies, and if they if they realize after conception. That uh, that uh, a baby has a certain gender, they will abort it, uh, and then they'll keep trying, they'll keep trying, and clearly this is homicide, um, and this is not allowed, obviously, because uh, of the same similar reasons for why abortion itself is not allowed in Islam. So, in in um, 
In Surah Al Surah Al Raad, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "He is the one who knows what develops in the wombs." So we know from proof from this ayah in the Quran that Allah is the one who knows what develops in the womb. He has only he, he has the knowledge who, who, what, of what happens in, in the womb of a of a of a mother. In Surah Al in Surah Luqman, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. It is he who has the knowledge of the day of judgment and the rain when it comes down. And he knows that which develops in the wombs. Again, proof that Allah SWT is the one who knows what's in the wombs. So when someone says that they're going to uh, do gender, gender selection, doesn't this contradict that only Allah knows what develops in the wombs? It's a question that we need to try to think about. Whether is, are, we, are, are we going against our aqidah, the fact that Allah, Allah is the one who knows? So these are just questions and things that we need to consider before making the ruling. Also, the ulama gave a fatwa in the late 70s and the early 80s. They're saying that at that, at that time, they, because of this, because of these uh, hadith, I'm sorry, because of these ayahs in the Quran, they said that only Allah knows the gender of the child developing of the womb, developing in the womb, and anyone who claims to know the gender is a liar and doesn't know what he's talking about. And we clearly know that's not true anymore because of scientific advancements such as ultrasound, and we can we can clearly see the gender of the child before um, before the uh, the child is born. And this is uh, a new information from a, from new tasweer, as I, as I mentioned yesterday, that when you do tasweer, you always try to upgrade your knowledge of a certain uh, topic, and you try to research as much as possible for current new information. And this is a new information, new technology that allows us to have a better tasweer of the of the issue. And unfortunately, at the time, because the scholars didn't have that knowledge, they were the ones who they they basically claimed this, and as a result, they disallowed it at the, in, the, in that time. So let's do some further tasweer uh, in this on this issue. So how do people select the gender of their of their child? There, are, as I said, there's many ways of doing so. Let's go over some of the some of the ways. The first way is through natural method. So this doesn't involve any medication. It's simply timing. So some people will say, some women will say that they know a certain fertile, the fertile time of their month, and that because of that certain time of the month, if they get pregnant at that time, somehow they will it will result in a male or a female. And this comes from experience. Um, experience. Some cultures, some people have experience in the matter, uh, whether it works or not. They believe from experience, anecdotal experience, that. Uh, it will happen, whether uh, and we don't know. Like scientifically, it may not make sense, but they believe so. Um, also, some people even preg plan their pregnancy at a certain time of the year because they somehow believe that from experience that at a certain time of the year they will get pregnant and result in a certain child, a certain gender. The ruling on this is clearly that it's permissible, since there is nothing wrong with it because they have basically they're basing it on anecdotal evidence experience. So anything that has experience based uh, is fine because there's nothing, there's no uh, uh, issue with it. However, there's an aqidah issue where basically they, they people have this superstition or they have some sort of like um, belief in uh, using astrology um, that uh, because of a certain season, because of a certain time from a, from a supernatural level that somehow something will happen. That's totally not allowed because the reliance is not in Allah. However, if it's just from experience that somehow at this time, say in March, they believe in March or, or January or whatever month, from experience, uh, a male gets born, that's allowed for someone to do. Which clearly most of us realize from a scientific uh, perspective that, uh, and from just also other uh, experiences that there are males and females that get born at, a certain time, at the same time of the year. So, this is not uh, as prominent uh, as a, of a method. The second method is di through diet. So some people say that they can eat certain foods uh, that will result in some sort of specific gender. Which so they might say they have to eat some sort of a specific like meal uh, all the time. Then somehow when they get pregnant, they will result in uh, say a female. And again, this is based upon field research. Um, and this is permissible, again, as long as there is no aqila issue involved, meaning that they put reliance in the food itself or they, they don't put the reliance in Allah. The third way that he will select gender is through intrauterine insemination, which is IUI. So 
So I'll refer to intrauterine insemination as IUI from now on because it's too long of a word. <laughs> um, so IUI, uh, and basically the concept of IUI is that male and female sperm is separated. So when you get the uh, people will get the actual um, the semen of a, of a of a male and separate the female and male sperm, and then they make sure that that specific sperm fertilizes the the egg uh, for the gender. Uh, that that person wishes. Now, whether is this clinically possible? Yes, it is possible. There have been uh, some ex, uh, some medical uh, uh, research in this area that people have been able to do this. Now, as for the ruling, the ruling will come up as we talk uh, later on. I'm just going to talk more about uh, just IUI, uh, IUI, and then uh, and then inshallah I'll give you some more background about the next topic, which is IVF. So IVF is another way people select gender. IVF is in vitro fertilization. And this is when the egg is fertilized by the sperm outside the body. So um, now instead of, uh, instead of actually having the fertilization in the mother, the egg is outside the body. Um, what has happened is that sometimes it's done in a lab where multiple options are made. Um, they, ha they try to fertilize many eggs. And then you basically... Once you have all these options, you select the gender for the child you want. And the others are discarded, maybe even frozen or donated to couples. So there is clearly a problem with the last point of discarding or, or, or donating um, because clearly that's not allowed since you are, if you're discarding it, you are potentially, um, potentially uh, aborting a child. Uh, similarly, um, donating to another couple has the issue of um, sent, like leaving your child up or giving your child up to someone else. Th that's not the main issue here. The main issue will, will come to uh, in the next few slides. Let me just finish off with the, the last way that people also um, do gender selection in that they do selective abortion. So selective abortion is when a woman basically keeps trying to get pregnant regularly, naturally, and then she realizes it's a certain gender. When she wants a certain gender, uh, if she doesn't, sorry, if she doesn't get that certain gender, she aborts. Um, and clearly, again, this is homicide. This is uh, killing a life, and uh, it's not definitely not allowed. Or they also sometimes even uh, forget naturally. They'll do insemination uh, in the womb where someone where she carries multiple children. So she'll get the semen of uh, some foreign person, um, and they'll or and then basically carry multiple children in the in the womb and then choose the gender uh, that she wants and then aborts the others. So this is just a way that people do it. And clearly, again, aborting obviously is totally haram. So now let's do some further taqif to the issue. So is it allowed for someone to wish for a certain gender? The concept of just wishing for a gender. Yes, it is allowed for someone to wish for a gender. And the proof for this is in Surah Al-Imran. Surah Al-Imran, when the mother of Maryam, um, of Maryam the, the, the Prophet Isa alayhi salam's mother, uh, sorry, not the mother of Maryam, uh, when she wanted to have a child, she wished for a boy. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala her with a girl, which is Maryam. And because she wished for the boy, we we know that, or we have proof that it's allowed for someone to wish for a boy, or wish for any specific gender. So that's just wishing. Now let's talk about whether the those specific methods are allowed. So clearly, the natural method, as we as we already mentioned, is permissible because it doesn't involve any issues. It's just literally trying um, certain times of the month uh, or times of the year. Um, diet. Again, it's, including medications is permissible if there's some proof that it, it works. Some sort of food, um, some sort of food is going to help you. It's permissible if you use a certain medication. If you use same sort of inject, injection, um, it's also permissible as long as it doesn't harm the, the body. Now, in terms of IUI and I, IVF, the issue here is with regards to lineage. So, if the egg of the of the person or uh, the woman is donated to other couple, then the problem with this is that this becomes the essence of zina. That the 
there's a child created from two uh, people or the, 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 the egg of one person and the sperm of another person that are not married. And this is a problem and clearly because, it, because the objective, the higher objective of the Sharia, the Bukhah of Sharia of preserving lineage is not achieved. And it's like zina. Also, say if we do an insemination where the egg is put in a foreign woman, so the egg is taken out of the body, uh, in, in the case of in vitro fertilization, the egg is taken out and is, is uh, fertilized with a, 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 a sperm of someone else, and the egg is put into a foreign woman, that she is carrying the baby of someone else, maybe another couple. And the problem with this is now there's a huge confusion of who the mother is. Is the one who has, who who gave the egg the mother, or is the one who's holding the baby in their womb a mother? Uh, and it causes a really big problems with terms of lineage, which is why uh, this is uh, a big a big problem. So what is the actual ruling? There's three opinions on on the use of IUI and IVF for the sake of um, for the sake of gender selection. The first opinion is that scholars, ulama, said that it's permissible with specific detailed conditions. And these detailed conditions were outlined by a fatwa of the Muslim Genetic Engineering Conference in Mecca. And this was held by the Islamic Fiqh Council in 2007. And this is documented in their, in their uh, minutes or their, their fatwa that this is the permissible conditions for, according to them. So the first condition is that you can only do so using these methods only in times of necessity and need. So meaning that there is some sort of essential need to eliminate, for example, hereditary problems. So there's a hereditary problem that needs to be uh, eliminated. You try, if you have, for example, the, uh, by doing these methods that somehow you will select that gender, it is allowed. B, it's permissible only on a case-by-case -case scenario. It's not a general policy that everyone can just take and say that because all the, the, this fatwa says you can do it, I'm going to take it. No, it's a specific general case-by-case -case scenario that has to be applied. Also, it also doesn't mean it also means that the government cannot make it an open policy to everyone because then it, people will abuse it, which is as you, as you can see, it happens. People abuse it and it causes weight problems because of lineage. And the C, again, about lineage, the utmost measures must be taken to avoid mixing of lineage, meaning that you cannot uh, uh, plant the, the, the egg in a, in a foreign mother. You cannot um, have the sperm of a, of, a, of a person that's foreign or that's not married uh, in the egg of that uh, of a woman. It has to be between married people and it has to be um, uh, it's, it's to, uh, to as much as possible to avoid mixing of lineage. It also means that if IVF is used, you need to make sure that the trust, that the lab that does it has to be trustworthy and that everything is clean and pure. Also, the the, the recommendation um, for sorry the, the the actual performing of the, the the method has to be done by a trustworthy doctor. Um, this fatwa gave the condition that it had to be a Muslim doctor. However, obviously, you know, for us in the West, we know that we do not always have Muslim doctors. So we say that as long as there are, we are dealing with a trustworthy clinic or medical staff, then, inshallah, it will be allowed. And we just need to explain to them the Islamic perspective of things and make sure they understand. And make sure as much as possible that they don't mess it up. Because sometimes when they have conflicting uh, views, they will mess it up. Also, the last condition is that you have to have a very strong belief that the end result, regardless of how what you do to try to get that certain gender, the end result belongs to Allah. And Allah is the one who has his Mashiach. He will have his own will. Whenever he pleases, he will have a certain a gender. So what's the evidence for this opinion? The evidence, again, is the fact that we talked about it's okay to make dua to Allah for a certain gender. It's okay to wish for a certain gender, and we already talked about that. So that's the first evidence. The second evidence, again, is what we talked about with regards to the ayah in Surah Al-Imran. When um, we said that Maryam's mother wished for a boy and she got a girl. And three, that the end result 
we still believe that the end result always belongs to Allah, but the actual methodology of of specific the gender or doing the uh, trying to specify the gender is a human methodology and it's permissible because it's done by humans. So that's the evidences. So that's 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 one part of the evidence. Also, in addition, we also this is also has a qiyas to al azal. That meaning before the before the um, the, the, the the what's it called before the the, the actual sorry, that the actual hadith we talked about before was that um, the the sahaba would try to avoid getting pregnant um, for uh, for having a certain gender. So by trying to by trying to get one of the two options, it's basically we do qiyas on that. Also, the next evidence is that uh, the default ruling in fiqh is that everything in mu'amalat is permissible unless there's proven otherwise. So, there's no specific evidence or something that's very strong to prove otherwise that it's haram. And six, that we use the higher le- level of the... Uh, of the, the, the Sorry, a qawal of removal, a removal of harm. The rule of fiqh we we use uh, that in Islam we try to remove all harm and difficulties. We, so, for example, uh, there are some, there may be some psychological or social harms that may be there uh, from a result of uh, having a certain, wanting a certain gender, and we need to evaluate this on an individual case by case basis. So that is the first opinion, and. Again, as I have to really iterate that do not take this opinion or this fatwa as an open license to go ahead and do it or do IUI, IVF. As I said, it's a case-by-case scenario. It's not a general thing for everyone to do, but you have to meet all those, all those conditions, inshallah, to, to be able to, uh, to be allowed to do this um, using IUI and IVF. Uh, and the best thing to do is again to go to a mufti, to someone who has the knowledge to be able to give you a fatwa. The second opinion with regards to IUI and IUF, so IVF, is that it is totally prohibited. And this, the reason uh, for this is that they, these scholars have said it's fully pro- prohibited, is that they say that it contradicts the Mashiach of Allah. It is an aqidah issue, meaning that they say that you are going against whether uh, the, the fact that Allah is the one who determines gender. Also, they say that it goes against the belief that only Allah knows the gender and has the right to determine gender himself. And basically, you're overstepping the boundaries and acting in the role of Allah. So this is a aqidah-based uh, refutation for the re- for allowing this. Also, in Surah, Surah, Surah Al-Nisa, the, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that the Shaitan says. And shall I whisper to them to change the creation of Allah? This is their evidence. They say that that by doing this, the shaitan is telling you to change the creation for Allah by trying to select a certain gender. Our response or the response of the other group is that we are not changing the creation, we are just selecting the specific gender. So we're not actually changing the, the creation of Allah. Also, their evidence for prohibition is that it's a logical evidence. Uh, that by doing so, by selecting a certain gender, you are creating imbalance between the genders, which we already talked about, the fact that by doing so, you have uh, people who can get married potentially as well, because there's too many of one gender. And the problem of mixture of lineage is a major problem, because it goes against the higher maqas al sharia But we, we say, we counter that and say that as long as you take the precautions to avoid the mi- mixture of lineage, then it's permissible. So that is uh, the the reasons for why the third group uh, deemed it to be prohibited. And finally, the third opinion for use of IUI and IVF is that it depends on, on the methodology. They say that natural methodologies are impermissible, such as, as I said, timing or food, they are permissible, but artificial insemination is totally not allowed regardless of the circumstance. And finally, we talked about selective abortion. Selective abortion, as I said already, completely haram. It's similar to regular abortion. We do qiyas to regular abortion because we already have uh, the ruling for regular abortion and we can, clearly cannot do that when we try to just 
keep 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 getting pregnant to see whether or not someone has a certain gender and then aborting the rest. Clearly that's haram. So inshallah, let's move on to the next topic, which is eugenics. Uh, inshallah, I'll try to finish this up very quickly to give you guys time for questions before we break. So eugenics, what is eugenics? So let's do the suite of the issue. Eugenics is the concept of, or the science that deals with the influences that improve the inborn quality of a race to have a certain advantage. So you're trying to have to do what you can to have a certain superior superiority of one race over the other. And the intent for doing this is to try to enhance the quality of human race or to purify a certain race or, um, or you're trying to remove deficiencies by clear, cleaning uh, any problems that, that, that race has. One second. So, then also the example is that the Nazis also the Nazis also tried to do this. They tried to actually use eugenics to clarify or to purify their race. Now, what are some forms of doing this? So, forms of selection of or of people or traits to be able to um, to to do this. The way we will do this. Uh, is that they direct progeny, so basically they direct progeny towards the desired offspring. So through diet, through exercise, through food, um, by by eating certain things, by exercising certain ways, they basically, by seeing what that sp- or the potential spouse does, they believe that by by doing this, by marrying that certain person, they by they will have certain traits that are prevalent in uh, that the progeny. Also, we know from pre-Islam. That that uh, in the uh, in the times of the Arab the the Jahili Arab what they what they would do is that they would the a husband would even uh, send his wife to some person in the neighborhood that had a trait that that person wanted uh, in order to have children with him um, and so that they will claim that children as their own and now clearly obviously this is haram because you are sending away your wife to have zina. Uh, but the point is, is that the the concept that we know that this was something that even at that time they did. Also, another way of uh, selecting uh, the traits are, is by genetic counseling or con- consulting, and this can be done by matchmaking on certain genetic features by by a scientific method. And this, a lot of times, it can be done by the government. So let's do the key of the issue. What is something that's similar to this issue of trying to um, copy, of trying to basically uh, figure out two potential uh, mates that will combine or that will basically produce uh, a certain trait in the, their progeny? So the similar topic, after a long discussion in the class, we talked about the fact that a similar topic is in the Kitab al-Nikah. So in the books of Fiqh and the Kitab al-Nikah, the book of Nikah, of the, fa- of the, of the concept of suitability. Suitability, whenever we, someone is trying to look for a certain uh, spouse, well, some of the recommendations, as we know, um, is to look at, for example, the first thing you look at is a religion. Uh, and then you also look at the manners, etc., etc., etc. These are certain things that you look for in, um, in a, when you look for a spouse. So as a result, we see that it's very similar to that, that you're literally just trying to uh, figure out what, who is suitable for you as a spouse. So as a result, the ruling on taking eugenics tests to basically try to see compatibilities or to try to like figure out whether the compatibility will result in a certain trait is that it's mubah. Permissible, but no specific ruling on whether it's recommended or whether it's uh, not recommended. If there is basically permissible and no real uh, benefit, there's no, there's no reward in, uh, in doing it or no sin in doing it either. Now, whether what ha- will happen if you know the incompatibility? So you, so you do a test and you, you figure out that, that these two people will have incompatibility and will produce maybe some sort of, uh, some sort of problem in the child. So you, find, you do some sort of genetic test uh, from, a, from, a, from a doctor and they figure out that these two, sp- uh, these two potential spouses will have uh, uh, a deficiency in the child in the progeny, is it allowed when you know this, can you choose to not marry? 
This is a question posed. So if you figure out, if you know that your child will have problems, can you choose to not marry? Ethically, you can, but Islamically, you can't stop it. Meaning that you can't think it's mandatory to stop it. So you you basically say you know that something's gonna. You potentially know scientifically that the child could have uh, some hereditary problems or some uh, traits that you don't want or some diseases that could arise. Ethically, you can say, okay, I don't want to marry uh, from, a, from, a, from a, just a, a subjective uh, stance. But Islamically, you cannot say that it's a fard for you not to marry that person. Because we know that in the ultimate, uh, in the ultimate end, Allah is the one who chooses whether someone has certain traits in, their, uh, in them when they are born. So, can you also use this, uh, the concept of eugenics, to prevent diseases? Um, we talked about IUI. Um, if you say for, if, say, for example, you try to use IUI uh, to do specific genetic modification um, to prevent diseases. So, uh, you, you do the insemination outside of the body. Um, is it allowed? We said that it's allowed for the opinion, first, uh, in one opinion, that it allowed as for the conditions we, we, we said in the IUI section. So if you want to somehow um, do the, to figure out, try to try to com- do compatibility tests to determine what kind of traits that the potential progeny you could have through IUI, inshallah, as long as those conditions are met, then it's allowed as a per opinion one. Opinion two, as we said already, that IUI, this uh, second opinion, they say it's, it's impermissible because of the aqida issues involved, as we already mentioned. And for those that want to just revise and go back to the issue, after the inshallah of this call, um, you can go back and listen to the recording so that you can rev- uh, just get a pressure. It's just uh, I'm running out of time. I need to go through the rest of the topics, inshallah, so we can uh, also take some questions. So there are three methods for eugenics. Um, the first method is natural method. So... For example, say if you try some sort of natural method, uh, you believe that some way you're going to naturally uh, um, figure out whether someone is going to be uh, compatible or have some traits. So, for example, someone exercises a lot or they eat certain foods a lot, then you come, you find someone else who's similar to them, and you believe that these two, um, these if these two get married, then they will produce a certain trait. Inshallah, that is permissible. However, you have to be very careful that as a natural way, that's allowed. But in terms of sperm banks, if you use sperm banks to do this, uh, by like saying that sometimes they have, people have sperm banks where they, they have sperm that say, they say this specific sperm has this certain trait from the, <clears throat> from the father, um, and you would like to, to use that. Clearly that's prohibited because it's exactly like zina. Also, in terms of saving f- sperm for the future, so say for example, a spouse, uh, a, a married couple, uh, decides that they want to uh, save their sperm for some reason or another for the future. Uh, that's allowed uh, in order for some, in order basically to uh, uh, to say, for example, somehow they're going to have certain traits, or maybe just preserve it such that in the future uh, they can use it. Inshallah, that's allowed. Also, the other natural methods are, for example, uh, through breastfeeding or breastfeeding um, a, a child. So, for example, say if a child is born from two people uh, and, that, uh, and that person, um, the, 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 the actual pro- the, the child, they believe that somehow through breastfeeding of another mother, um, they will get some sort of, uh, some sort of hereditary, some traits. The child that's allowed. We'll take the same ruling as uh, um, weaning a, 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 a child, uh, and it's permissible. The second way uh, that people do eugenics is through genetic modification. And this is basically, when it comes down to a, basically a scientific uh, modification uh, to the actual gene. And this can, sometimes it can be done at, a, um, at an institutionalized level, and when it's done at an institutionalized level, it is haram. Because, and this is the, um, this is the opinion of the majority. Well, you know, at, a, at a government level, you basically try to produce child on a mass level through genetic modification. 
However, it is allowed in individual circumstances. And this is, for example, when you need to prevent diseases. However, it's only allowed if it doesn't engineer germ cells or stem cells, only somatic cells, meaning that you don't, you don't have uh, the, the type of cell that's modified. It's basically de de developing a human living somatic cell, not, um, not, a, not, not, a, not a, a certain state of uh, the reproduction. So clearly, I'm not a bio someone who's very well versed in biology. I'm just trying to give you what what the the concept of uh, that, that what was said in the class. Unfortunately, myself, I don't know biology as well. But just to know, if you need to ever talk about this, it's allowed if you have somatic cells. And inshallah, but then inshallah, you do the research to figure out, understand this in more detail. And finally, can genetic modification be done for? the purpose or the enhancement of qualities. So are you allowed to do it if you want to somehow enhance the intelligence of, a, of the progeny or to have certain beauty? And there's two opinions on this matter. The first opinion say that it is prohibited to do it, to do genetic modification, um, because of the evidence in Surah, Surah Nisa that says, as we already, uh, so we already mentioned this, Surah Nisa, in Surah Nisa, the shaitan, Allah SWT says that the shaitan whispers to those who modify themselves. And we also have the evidence from hadith that Prophet ﷺ cursed the one who clipped eyebrows. So we know that is not allowed to modify yourself. So we do qiyas on this to genetic modification to the fact that if you want to have a child for the sake of having certain beautification or certain intellect, then it's not allowed for this reason. The opinion two, the second opinion, from the minority opinion, is that it's allowed. Um, and this, their evidence was that Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. And they also say that the default ruling in the matters of Mu'amalat is that it's allowed unless prohibited. And they also make qiyas to the, the, the contemporary issue of plastic surgery. Because there are many plastic surgeries that are considered permissible, so they say that it's similar to that, that you are uh, modifying uh, your body for certain plastic surgeries. But the majority say it's prohibited, and that was the one, that, that was the opinion that was recommended in the class. So, inshallah, um, that's the end of the, my session, inshallah. Uh, I, as I mentioned, I gave you the opinions or whatever was taught in the class as best as I possibly could. There was additional topics with regards to additional issues with medical issues. But unfortunately, I don't have time to go over them. Um, but inshallah, I will now open up for questions. Uh, inshallah, I will do my best to answer questions as related to what was explained in the class, in the session tonight. Um, and I cannot, as I said, I, can, I have to re-emphasize this. I am not someone who will give fatwa. If you have a specific question with regards to a specific scenario for yourself or someone else, or if you have uh, a question with regards to the ruling, uh, you can ask me a question with regards to the ruling or or maybe with regards to more clarification. However, if it's something that you you have that clearly you you can under you can realize that I'm not someone who can answer that, please save that question and ask someone of knowledge. Okay, inshallah. So I'll take some questions if there are any questions. Are there any questions? Any questions? Doesn't seem like anyone has any questions. Awkward silence. <laughs> Are there any questions? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, while I'm waiting for questions, 
Uh, just wanted to re reiterate, please, that we will take a five-minute break after I'm done the questions, uh, and inshallah, Sister Maimuna will be coming on, I believe, to talk about, um, I believe, to talk about Salam, if I recall. Let me just double check. I think also topic of Salam. Sorry. Yeah, so inshallah, after I'm, I'm done, Sister Maimuna will be talking about the study of humility that was taught by Shaykh Yasser uh, Qadi. Okay, so there are questions. There's a question here. You said that IUI and IVF are only permissible in times of necessity. Does this include the instance of a couple who is infertile? So I cannot give an answer for this um, as I do not know 100% for sure. I won't try, I'll decline. But I will give you my, I will give you my gut feeling, uh, in terms of what I feel is some information, background information to understand. Um, in such a case, it really depends upon how much of a, how much of an effect it is for, for example, the family, their psychological issues, et cetera, et cetera. Is it something that is some, it will cause, uh, problems that, that, will, that will alleviate problems in uh, from a psychological level um, and or or will it uh, benefit the family but for uh, as a general fatwa I cannot say for sure it's better for you to ask someone of knowledge all right question two assalamu alaikum with regards to gender selection using IUI and IVF what was the opinion of Sheikh Yasser Birjan very good question. I be, if I recall, he is a, he was of the opinion of following the, the opinion of uh, the first opinion with all the conditions that is permissible with those conditions. Allah Taala Alam. That's what I recall. All right, question three. Just to clarify, as a natural method for mate selection, saving sperm for the future is permissible. Is the same ruling given for eggs? <sighs> Allah Ta'ala Alam, I have no idea. <laughs> I do not know. I better to ask someone. I, we will not discuss saving eggs for the future. Question four, please repeat the full form of IVF and IUI. I'm assuming IVF, you just want to know what, it, what the word is. IVF is in vitro fertilization, in vitro fertilization, and IUI is intrauterine, is in, is intrauterine insemination. Let me just double check my slides. I believe it's insemination. Let me just double check. Yes, intrauterine insemination. That's correct. Is this the correct understanding with regards to allowing genetic modifications of somatic cells, not inheritable, but not germ cells which are inheritable? So you can as you can alter your traits, but not your future children. How Allah I do not know. Do not know. It's better to ask Sheikh. If you have a chance and you see Sheikh Rasul Birjas, you have a class with him, ask him or ask someone of knowledge. Allah I have no idea. Question five. Question five. So as you can see, these questions are very difficult because, first of all, I do not have a biologic, biology background, um, nor do I have the same level of uh, Islamic background that a, a sheikh would have. So obviously, 
it's really difficult for me, as you can understand from my from my angle, to be able to help you at all. So I'm doing my best to basically give you what I have some indication from from the class. But I would, as I said yesterday, and as I said again, I tell you again, even the scholars, even the ones, even the people of knowledge who have knowledge of this matter, will always go to someone with more knowledge than them because they are fearful of uh, themselves having some sort of bias or some sort of uh, so making a decision that is uh, that comes from desires. So that's why I would always recommend for anyone in such a situation to ask someone with regards to these specific issues, especially for the fact that these are fiqh and nawazim and they're not clear-cut. They don't have clear-cut evidences. They are based on ishtihad. All right, question six. Was there any mention in class about a man and a woman marrying with the knowledge that they can pass along a hereditary disease, but then choosing not to have children? Example, using birth control and adl. Okay, so we, and I mentioned this already, I believe, um, that if you have, if you know that you will pass a, a hereditary disease or that the person, the child will have um, some sort of disease as a result of the, the man marrying that woman, you are allowed ethically to do so, but Islamically, uh, there is literally like no ruling. It's not mandatory to say no. You cannot do it. It's up to you to to choose. If you choose, you can go ahead and do it because we know that it is still the Mashia of Allah that He has His will. It will happen if He wants it or not. Um, so we have that trust because we don't know for sure. Like some of these tests. Like even though there may be very high predictability, there could be that there could be that percentage or that uh, the potential of it not happening. So you cannot say that it's mandatory for for someone not to do it. It's up to you basically. And yes, you can use birth control as in such a case if you want to uh, to to choose not to have children in such a case. Question seven: Is it good for the woman? To go on her, to have her ultrasound scan on her baby to know the gender, and this will be the last question. So, is it a good for a woman to go to ultrasound to have? Okay, so whether it's good or not, that is up to you. Like there is literally no ruling on whether you should or not. Um, there's no, there's no basically evidence to say that it's not allowed. Um, if uh, on, from from what I know, there's nothing that I can say that's not allowed. And we know, and I know already. I believe, I, if I recall, uh, some of the some of the, sh- the shiuch in the past who have taught me have have told me that it's allowed for you to do this because you are not doing anything except just using tools to basically uh, determine the, the the gender of the child. Unless, yeah, Allah Taala alam. That's what I, from what I was taught. Okay, so inshallah, that's the end of the session for 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 my part of the session. Uh, inshallah, we'll take a five minute break, and then after I'm done, Sister Maymuna will be discussing the the topic of humility that was taught by Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Please stay on the the call. Inshallah, come after come back after five minutes, uh, and inshallah, Sister Maymuna will start. Wassalamu khair for everyone for listening. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The moderator has left the conference.